in this part, the heat map, how to generate the heat maps. So now I have this kind of data in, in, the, in the map, which you can see, for example, I have points or dots or here triangles. So for example, if you right click here in this traffic heat map, and if you check this part, you'll find that, for example, our, what is our data? It's the same data set which we discussed in the previous section. So this is showing again site traffic and, and so on, this kind of distribution. So I would like to generate the heat map to check again the areas with high traffic, for example, Twitter traffic, but using the heat map. This is, can be done. And heat map can be done for different things. It can, feel, for example, identify the area with high population or high uh, distribution of points, uh, depend on whatever you are going to check. So, for example, here I would like to check with a, a, a metric, which is a high traffic, for example. I need to check which area generating high traffic by, for example, red color. So, this is the dots which you have it. Each dot, like each point of each side, like showing this kind of point in the map. So, actually, what we are expecting to get, I'm going to explain two methods of generating heat maps. The first thing I, I, I can get it, it's just this way around. We can get this kind of heat map. So, this one presenting that, okay, the red color here, showing this is area, these two areas having high traffic and above yellow also having kind of moderated traffic uh, all the others which is blue is kind of good traffic this is one way around and the second method which i prefer it more which is just one is just showing for example this particular area having very traffic high traffic all and this area as well it's it's kind of close for the other one but it's just giving more exploration about that one and then the top right here for example showing that this area also having high traffic so if you compare for example both of them you can see it's kind of similar but the other one giving more clear figure so this also will be based on your reference, what you are looking to do, because uh, actually at the end, one of them, which is the first or second one I'm going to explain is just by itself. So you can get similar results by both of them at the end. So now let's just explore the two different methods which you have it in, in the maps, in the heat map creation. So now I'll, I'll, I'm going to convert this kind of points, uh, which is representing one side and having equivalent traffic into heat map. The first method I'm going to use is something called actually IDW. If you look into this processing toolbox and you search for something called ID with something that's under this interpolation, you'll find something called IDW inter interpolation. So if you click this, double click this ID interpolation, it would give you this kind of window, as you can see here. The first thing that this is names inverse distance weighted, and this is generate interpolation of each vector point, of vector layer. And if you look into the data inputs which you're having here, first it's asking you what is your vector layer. So I'm going to use this traffic points. Then it's asking me what is your interpolation attribute. For example, if you have whatever metric, for example, traffic or whatever other thing, you need just to select the metric. For example, here I would like to generate my heat map or my vector or my raster layer based on total traffic. Actually, the main idea of this IDW interpolation, it will just convert these points into raster, a smooth raster. It, it, raster means it can be an image, so it will be based on pixel. As you can see down here. So first, let's click here. Once you can select the interpolation attribute, which is traffic, I just need to make plus and add it here. The second point here that it's asking you which area you would like extent, at which extent you would like to generate your, your IDW image or the raster. So for example, here, if you click on this uh, arrow, you will find that it can be based, you can draw that on the map manually. And once you draw it, it give you here coordinates, or you can just use the current open, current map canvas extents, which is the one which is have it here as a zoom in this part. Let's first try this one. Draw map on map canvas. So if you, for example, here, it will give you an option to draw. So for example, I would like to make here for this boundary, right? So once you do like that, it will give you a coordinates here. But for now, I will just use the same method, but here, I'll just make it based on use current map canvas. So it will just give me the full screen here. My so it's giving me here now the the coordinates for this kind of, of map canvas. So now the, the second point that here it's asking you, okay, how many pixel you would like to generate? If you remember this pixel in, in context of raster, raster data in general, a pixel is the smallest individual unit or element of, of a digital image. So if I'm going to generate an image, this would be the smallest uh, smallest point of this digital image. And the term of, of pixel in general is, is derived from the, the word picture and, and element. And pixel in general represent a single point on the raster grid. Once we have a raster or an image, this is representing a single point in this grid, and each point can be represented by color, for example, which we are going to use it, for example, to generate our heat map. So now, for example, this is just two i don't try this one so i need just to change for example to try 0.001 so now it's saying for example it gave me this value this is can actually can even make it more less you can have more pixels more rows and more columns 
and this is depending on your laptop or computer processing so this is will give you even more data when you're increasing the pixel size this can give you more accurate information so for now i'm going to use this value which is 0.001 giving you you have around 1000 pixel and and in the rows and columns as you can see here so if i click run it might take sometimes more time so let's see how long it will take so now it's 99 percent so now it's being done and now there is a layer created called interpolated here let me just change the name first for this one to avoid confusion with the other existing one i will call, call this one for example idw underscore traffic inside so now this layer here this one is being generated here as you can see but as you can see it's still not showing in the map i need to do that because actually it's coming under the layer if you look in the top again layer older orders layer orders you find that this one coming after the google satellite for example you just need to move the order here so you can see now it's being represented as as an image or raster as you can see now and you have different colors but like black and so on so now we need to convert this one into heat map or, or different colors so how to do that you can again same method what whatever we was doing before double left click here and it will be opening this under symbology again you'll find that this render type change this one to single band gray to single band with zero color then you will find this kind of, of ranges now it's asking you again what is your color ramp i need my color ramp same as, uh, for example based on this spectral but i need to start with the lowest to be for example starting invert color the lowest will be here blue and the highest will be or uh, red red and orange and the main point here that this is showing only me five only five categories this is can be controlled and usually i don't use this mood or five fixed classes i use another method but let's first see what we'll get from here and one more important point here you can see for example there is different options seeing that what is the minimum value i'd like to check usually it's calculated based on existing data so take the minimum value which is 1.1 maybe there is something more so this can be manually changed for example you can say from 0.5 so it will start classifying the data as as it see it can do so i'll just run it to 1.1 here also the label itself showing like a lot of digits so you can just from labor precision here you can just change it for example to one so it will give you as a label it will be much less here so let's apply and see what we'll get and bottom down here you just have you can just play around with the data formatting as well so apply See now it's just not giving me a kind of heat map here. Just let's click OK and come back for this one again. So now, for example, it's showing now, okay, this area is kind of yellow. This one also range. It's kind of similar for whatever we get before from the Voronoi, Voronoi right area when you define the area of influence. It's kind of similar. This is also a site was before was having a problem. So this is also another similar thing. But the main idea here that we have a different other method to show this kind of other for matches, which is bigger element. So let me show you how you can do that. For example, if you double click here, just as, 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 for example, changing the formatting, you can see you have something here called mood here, this mood. If you make it quantile, quantile actually usually, quantile usually, as you can see here, it's asking you how many classes you would like to have. For example, here I have five. Let's assume that I would like to change it, for example, to eight cl classes. If you like this part, now change it to eight classes. So now I have more classes even. So even you can make it 10 classes. So it give you here more colors. So if I click apply, for example, I'm expecting to have now, for example, more areas. Now I increase the red colors, for example, 3.8, 3.6. So I will have more extension here. See now here, yeah, it's showing like this. But as you can see that the background, for example, for the Google Earth is not at, at all showing uh, now. So you can play around with all of this with the formatting until you see, for example, here, how you can see this part. Now, if you'd like to get an image to try to, to have a little bit showing your Google Earth format, you need again to double click. And it start playing around with your this blending mode. This blending mode usually I use hard light if I'm using the Google satellite. So if I click apply, see now how it looks like. It's like merging with the Google satellite. Let's see until it's blue. See now, okay, very good. Now it's showing that okay, this is your highest area. Only this side having a problem. Also here, and your Google satellite is showing in the background here, as you can see for this area. So this is also one of the things i use it for the idw interpolation now let's go to the last method for the heat map actually there is another method but i'm just going to show the most common used one for the heat map which is very like easy one also so the first method as we summarized as we mentioned it's based on this idw under the processing toolbox so the last one actually if you go to this heat map we have the points this kind of points you can just double click double left click here and it be showing here so under the same if you remember symbology under the symbology you have before we use this categorized you find if you look down here you even having this kind of heat map you have another options but we are going to use this heat map now 
and under the heat map first is asking you again for the color ramp so i will use the same color ramp which we used it already which is called the spectral and i need again to reverse this one to start from blue till the red color and here it's asking you for the radius and this radius for example for for this particular point how much radius you would like to increase so the more the radius the more the areas which being showing was for example even blue or red or yellow color based on the area how it being so i will start first with 20 for example now it's asking you if i generated like this by by default it just will select the areas which having the highest contribution or high points for example if you assume that you're using another data set which having many points in the map it will just go in and they check these points based on the points contribution or by boy distribution on the map so the areas with highest point distribution it will be representing in color, red color and the vi uh, vice versa whenever you have less number of points so for example now no i would like to wait my my points by for example here in this particular example same as we mentioned by total traffic right so i need you to look into the points and try to give me the heat map based on the metric which i give it here based on total traffic and by the way this is also can be like a formula you can if you click in this one you can just give it a formula for example you would like to categorize based on the traffic greater than a, a, a specific value for example greater than two or whatever as, as example here so it will be showing this kind of information so for now i'll just give this one discard the change i was just giving this one let's apply and see what we'll get see very good so now i am getting this kind of information which is showing that for example this area having traffic this one as well and this yellow areas but it's not very close to the other and this is can be controlled for example if you remember the other one if you click here it's showing more red as you can see we can try to get this one similar to the other as well if you double click here and under this double click this part you can for example now not sorry the, the traffic heat map here under this part for example you can show that for example 40 for 40 radius so i'm increasing this ready area will increase you can see now it's being increased more so it will get as long as increasing the radius will get closer to this IDW method as well. This one, for example, here, if you look here. So, yes. One important point, usually when you run it, it will not come like this. It will come with something, but I applied this uh, before starting the, this kind of part in the video. So, for example, uh, when you apply it, you will see that most of the, the background will be blue. The Google Earth will not be showing. Why? If you look in this layer rendering bar, and if you check this obesity, usually it's like by default it's 100 percent. so if it's by 100 percent, this is what you are expecting to get in the in the beginning you all the map which is having no values of be showing as blue so if you'd like to get for example the background of the google earth in this case see the good satellites being shown uh, hiding, hiding this one you now just need to double click again and as we just mentioned to go to this under the symbology heat map layer rendering and change for example the obesity to 50 percent as an example or even less depend on what you need so if you click like this now it will be showing this kind of map so and this part actually now this is was how we can do the heat map so as a summary it can be done for the symbology in symbology heat map or using this idw uh, tool idw interpolation which i prefer more than the other one so now let's move to the next part assume now you would like to get a histogram with your tra with your for example traffic distribution so if you double click here it's just, just additional option you'll find something called under this symbology and you have something called histogram here if you look into that part it's showing here compute histogram let's try to click and see what we get see very good see now it's giving you the frequency for example the, the x-axis is presenting your your traffic from starting from zero to one so it's just giving you that okay this particular range from th three to four is presenting this uh, number the, the traffic which you have it based on this side so we are now we know that this is kind of our uh, histogram we can do and even you can control the minimum and maximum value and after that, you can just export it to an image and you can use it also for your reference. So there's also an option under this IDW, which where you can generate a histogram for your data which being used in the map. So that's it for the heat map part. 